For Muslim intellectuals who subscribe to the third position, the statement Islam and modernity are incompatible is not tenable. They are convinced of the possibility of combining Islam and modernity and base their views on the Quran, which Muslim fundamentalists also do for their views. Using the Quran as the basis for reflection on the question of whether Islam and modernity are compatible does not necessarily stem from a writer's personal convictions, but may arise from the belief that such an approach would appeal to more Muslims because of its trusted frame of reference as starting point and criterion. An opening to reconciliation with modernity can then be made through a different reading and interpretation of the Quran. Instead of reading and interpreting the Quran by a letter, some Muslim intellectuals propose a reading and interpretation by the spirit. According to them, the spirit of the Quran is dynamic, progressive, and just, which encourages not only modernity, but the general welfare of the believing community and is not in conflict with the beliefs or principles of Islam. Such argumentation is characteristic of Islamic modernism, a movement that came into being at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, and whose leader was Muhammad Abdu. In addition to an interpretation of the Quran by the Spirit, Muslim intellectuals who strive for innovative Islamic thinking and belief that Islam and modernity are not mutually exclusive concepts have developed new approaches and visions of the Quran to make possible the desired compatibility. The ideas of such contemporary Muslim intellectuals as Nasser Hamid Abu Said, he's originally for Egypt, but in the end of his life he lived in the Netherlands and he was, in fact, he was Dutch. Uh, he died this year and that's a, a great loss uh, for uh, 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 the Muslim intellectuals. So, Muslim intellectuals as Nasser Hamid Abu Said and Mohammed Arkoun, who is an Algerian, and, but who was professor at the Sorbonne in Paris. He also died this year, so this is a very bad year. Maybe it's a good year for wine, but uh, for Muslim intellectuals, it's a bad year. Um, Nasser Hamoud Abu Said and Mohammed Arkoun, who attempt to promote democracy, human rights, and other attributes of modernity by means of a different reading and approach to the Quran, have become available to a broader public as a result of translations of the work or publications about them and their ideas. In connection with the topic, Muslims and modernity, the ideas of the former Egyptian high court judge, Mohammed Said al ashmawi born in 1932, whose person and work is not that well known in the West, should be put in the limelight. al ashmawi emphasizes the fact that the Quran is a text and a text does not speak by itself. Only the interpretation of people allows the text to speak. And every interpretation is potentially controversial. Moreover, every interpretation is partially de determined by the social historical context in which the interpreter finds him or herself. Similarly, the text itself came into being in a specific historical context and is molded by the circumstances of that context. Consequently, a reader of the Quran must thoroughly realize that his interpretation of the Quran is only his opinion of defined norms, not the defined norms themselves. Mohammed Arkun expresses this notion even more pointedly by saying that every understanding of the Quran is also a misunderstanding. El Ashmawi wanted his approach to the Quran, the essence of which is that no one can claim his interpretation to be the only correct one and 
to be the reflection of God's will, to make it possible for Muslims to understand secularism and secularization within an Islamic frame of reverence and thus be able to accept it. Secularism and secularization are seemingly the greatest obstacles for many Muslims in thinking about and accepting modernity. Whereas the separation of church and state is considered by some West European politicians as an essential value of West European society, which determines the identity of the European Union. <clears throat> the question, what is the attitude of Muslims towards modernity, can thus be reformulated more pointedly as, what is the attitude of Muslims towards secularism and secularization? What we understand by secularism, following the, the dictionary, is the climate that fosters secularization. And secularization is the process of functional differentiation and emancipation of secular spheres, in particular the state, the economy, and science, as distinct from the religious sphere and the related differentiation and limitation of religion within its, its own newly determined religious sphere. In many Western languages, secularization is often defined as the separation of church and state. It will come as no surprise that there is no unanimity of opinion about secularism and secularization among Muslims. Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the founder of Hamas in 1987, can be seen as the exponent of the ideas of many Muslim fundamentalists. <coughs> he vehemently rejected secularization and the secular state and characterized it as the absolute antithesis of Islam. The rejection of secularism and secularization by most Muslim fundamentalists does not mean that all Muslim intellectuals are taken by secularism. There are three possible explanations for the fact that some Muslim intellectuals are suspicious and dismissive of it. Firstly, because of the above mentioned fact that they associate modernity and secularism with colonial domination. domination. Secondly, because of the fear that secularism and secularization imply the marginalization of religion, perhaps even the end of religion. Thirdly, because originally Arab, Christians intellect, Arab Christian intellectuals were the most fervent protagonists of secularism in the Muslim world. These Christian Arabs envisioned a secular state in which Muslims and Christians would be completely equal. <clears throat> 